three, two, one. Hey shorties, welcome back to the Short Asian Girls podcast where we talk about everything Asian from a five feet point of view. This podcast is about music, fashion, food, cheese me, and of course just being short. And again, we may not be ABGs, but we sure are SAGs and we'll talk about everything and anything related to it. So obviously if you haven't already watched or listened to episode zero on Spotify or YouTube, go ahead and do that. Because today we're going to be talking a little more about our Asian culture, our Filipino culture, and our journey into the music industry and how our ethnic background affects that. Yeah, I feel like, um, I guess for me, if you haven't again watched or listened to episode zero, zero, we mentioned I'm your host Sarah Michelle. I live and was born and raised here in LA, Los Angeles, California, and our lovely host was also is from seattle but mm-hmm. we have totally different backgrounds that exactly. has kind of shaped our view of mm-hmm. the music and industry like entertainment and everything yeah. so yeah how about you go first so for me yeah. again i wasn't born here in the u.s so i was born in the philippines and i moved here at a really young age so my first exposure to media film music everything entertainment industry related technically is from asia and when i moved here to the u.s There was obviously some culture shocks, a lot of culture shocks, because for those of you that don't know, in Asian media, a lot of the culture is very prevalent in what you see on TV. They go more so based on like traditions and things that they believe in. So when I went here to America, what I knew was very different to what you grew up with. And I feel like, I guess, having kind of a different background kind of helped me appreciate and also find my own preferences in western media so finding that middle ground and just learning still learning still learning right now yeah i guess mine's very different um Mm -hmm. i'm born here raised here and so are my sisters so kind of that that community and that culture from Mm -hmm. my family was also just the western music the 2000s and 90s -hmm. from my mom the 50s the 60s um you got the classics i did i really did (laughs) And we always go back and my mom's like, my, my dad liked this. But anyways, um, my whole family comes in like a big community where it's like very hardcore Filipinos. Mm. Um, the mix of Filipinos and Americans. And then, yeah. you know, obviously uh-huh. the generation that I am. So mm-hmm. I got to see a little bit of everything, but I never really understood the hype of music music until mm-hmm. I kind of grew up and was like, oh, like this is what music really just means. So, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like even like going into like elementary school, Middle school. I don't know if your experience is a uh-huh. little different, but for me, I feel like I learned a lot from the transfer students exactly. that used to come from like the Philippines, uh-huh. like different Asian cultures. Um, I learned about K-pop in high school, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> but like, you know, it's everything is different yeah. to me. So like, I guess it's for me living in LA. I got a glimpse of every culture mm-hmm. um, one by one as I met new people and going on from that. And I feel yeah. like re- again, regardless of like what we mentioned in episode zero you know just because we're filipino and that's like our first kind of um individuality our first identity doesn't mean that we're kind of ignorant or like unknowledgeable about other stuff it's just that again like for you you're still learning about it but you're lucky in the sense that you got the classics because i feel like as new music or like new genres and like more modern stuff is coming out you ca- some people kind of lose sight of like who started it and i feel like oh. getting that og or like that classic um knowledge will help yeah. you appreciate it more rather than rather than just going straight into opm now which is still it's still good but obviously yeah. it's um becoming global and the lines are getting blurred so it's kind of it might sound similar to you so yeah. you might not understand like oh this is how filipino music first sounded and yeah. now hear how how it has transformed Yeah, definitely. And I feel like um, for me, I was able to watch it from like the movies and like I always like hear like people are always surprised when they hear Uh it from me because I'm very, very, very Americanized. Like Uh I like you meet me and I'll like only talk about this. But like when Uh I go into the classics, it's kind of like the old generation. So like really old movies like Annie B. (laughs) (laughs) No, I was honestly Um, shocked when you told me like, oh, do you know this song? And it was like a Gary V song. And I was like, how do you know that song? Um, If no one knows, that's my mom's husband. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. So your dad, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I no, mean, but yeah, again, that was like, I guess that's something that we bonded over. Yeah. Because we're, again, if you guys don't know, we're like the youngest in our family. So you we kind of have that advantage of having like the modern or being like connected more to modern music. But being that we also know like the classics is something that people don't really expect from us. Yeah. And I'm happy that we have that. But again, um, growing up that like you mentioned earlier, who was your, I guess, role models or like people that you saw on TV that you still to this day, like listen to their music? You know, it's crazy bringing that up. This is like on topic, but also very off topic. Yeah. But like when I used to watch like Sendera Park, I, I promise you guys, like, don't judge me, but I always thought she was actually Filipino. But then, like, you know, going into, like, the story, if nobody, nobody really knows, uh-huh. San, Sandera Park, yeah. she tried out for, what, um, Korean I think star, music, yeah. but then she was, like, she wasn't really getting anywhere mm-hmm. back then in K-pop because mm-hmm. she's, um, what, born and raised Korean. Mm-hmm. She learned the Filipino culture. She went in, like... Because you know, her family moved that. to her the Philippines. Moved, and yeah. then she became, like, a world star in the mm-hmm. Philippines. Like, when I was younger, when I was, like, Sarah, five, six, ten, yeah. I really thought, oh, my God, Sandera Park is so, like, very great Filipino. No, and she, like... And she, no, like, she spoke she really well. That. Like, she, she speaks better than I do, but it's okay. <laughs> we learn. We live and we learn, you know? <laughs> no, but... And also, like, with her, she didn't kind of... In her heart and in her mind, she's Filipino. And that's what I love about her. Like, Mm -hmm. regardless of, like, the blood that actually runs down her veins, it's the culture that she grew up in. Mm -hmm. So, in her heart and mind, she's Korean and she's Filipino. So, I think that I love that. Yeah. But um, who else was it? Sarah Hieronimo. Oh, yeah. Sarah Hieronimo. She's, like, my OG, OG, like, girl crush. She's my OG (laughs) idol. She's my everything growing up. Yeah. She's everything and ev- she, everything and anything that I wanted to be yeah, and still exactly. want to be Always. right now. And then what going into more westernized mm-hmm. ways, I looked up to what AJ Raphael. Jeremy I just Passion. remember Jeremy Passion, Jesse Barrera. Like I just remember when when YouTube like became a thing, and I used yeah. to watch it, and I used to tell myself and my friends, I was like, let's let's do it, let's like you know, let's let's go for it. But I never really knew that I could until now but or even like um wasabi productions oh I my mean, god yeah. yeah you know i've i've been watching their po- their their new the stuff one. and i'm just like their their passion together uh-huh. is still so strong and i'm just like I you really know like it. you know what i realized when you mentioned like youtubers when youtube became like a thing in media and like it became like a career i guess like in the very very early 2000s mm-hmm. asians were ruling youtube they were like just kidding like, films yeah you remember like the one um joji was oh on YouTube? with um what, filthy frank <laughs> yeah when he was no but we don't talk about that yeah we don't so but you know joji as an artist i love him i love him too yeah. but i think it's funny because now again it's kind of like going in cycles where asian excellency and like other minority groups are becoming celebrated now but i think people forget that in the beginning it was the minorities who always started it because yeah. it's that I- ideology of like we felt like we weren't seen or heard anywhere else so we kind of felt like we had to go to other platforms or do other things to find our own place mm-hmm. kind of like how our boss started track life mm-hmm. and but um yeah i think people forget that a lot of asian even in the beauty industry like michelle um michelle fan i believe that's her last name redmond rock redmond rock um what's her name whaley Whaley TV. Yeah. Who else? Um, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Oh, Ta. yeah. Jeffrey Ta. Yeah. So there's Patrick Star. Yeah. A lot of these people started way before a lot of the more popular makeup YouTubers or like art musician YouTubers now started it. It's just that obviously because we they were part of minorities, they didn't really get that whole stardom or that spotlight that I feel like they should have been given at the time yeah. that they did. But, you know, they're making bank on it now because they started early. They got the views and now they're living, loving life. No, exactly. And they gave hope to us yeah. young um, Asians, Asian Americans that Are honestly, we- I feel like apart from just doing it and like having passion for it, sometimes that's enough because I feel like that's what people lose first. Yeah. And I feel like 
even just like talking to AJ about it, like talking about all of our old role models mm-hmm. or kind of like looking into what we used to do, that helps me push as an Asian woman working yeah. in the industry. Like, you know, we're mm-hmm. both Filipinos. Like, I feel like for me, nothing should discourage me from like moving forward mm-hmm. within the entertainment industry, whether it's my full time job, my part time exactly. job, my weekend job. You know, I just feel like the aspirations are really big there, you mm-hmm. know, and the goal, the, the goal to the end line is really what we're striving for, mm-hmm. but also kind of just enjoying it as yeah. well. Cause you know, and, um, just to everyone out there too, the only thing that's honestly stopping you is you like, you can have many other circumstances, like, you know, whether it be financial or situational at the end of the day, it may not happen now, but if you keep that promise to yourself or like, just keep that passion in your heart and in your mind, it will happen at some point. It may not be now. Like for us, this took us almost a year to do this, but yeah. we're doing it now. And we hope that just like with our role models, I'm not saying we want to become your role models, but we hope we want to be able to become people that show you that nothing's impossible and that all you have to do is to just start it. Yeah. And everything else will follow. Yeah. And it's just like you keep you have to keep going mm-hmm. after that. Because, exactly. You know, even if it starts off really slow or rocky or rocky, yeah. it really doesn't matter as long as you're enjoying what you're doing mm-hmm. and you're doing all your passions mm-hmm. and, you know, yeah and yourself I, yeah i've been with like track life just working like mm-hmm. on little stuff here yeah. and there for like two years and it, you know it re- literally this year was the year where i'm actually doing mm-hmm. more things and it's kind of just pushing forward like mm-hmm. if it's your dream it's your dream go for it whether or not people tell you not to or not and also it's like if you don't have if you don't have anyone who believes in you in the beginning that's okay if you're if you want your dream to happen the only person who can make that happen is you mm, yeah but Maybe you'll find a friend on the way like we did. Like we did. very. Yeah. Or you can do it by yourself and then find your group of people later. Yeah. Yeah. Big fun fact. <laughs> Before this podcast was even like an idea, I always was like joking around with my friends. Uh-huh. Like, let's do it. Let's do it. And I was just like, we never did it because, I mean, for me, I kept I kept wanting to look forward. I kept wanting to do more. But my friends never really wanted to do they more. Push through with but it. then it's also like this industry is not for everyone. Like, exactly. You know, visually, vocally, like not everyone's comfortable doing it. But You have to be, I feel like to enter this industry, you have to know from the beginning that you have to be okay with not being liked. Yeah, I'm I am. People don't <laughs> like me already. It's OK. It's OK. What we am like I going to do? <laughs> I like you, too. <laughs> sometimes sometimes <laughs> no but, but yeah, yeah um i think i think that's as much as we can give you in terms of advice but you just have to do it it's gonna hurt it might hurt yeah. but you know i guess you'll just watch us through the ups and downs through this podcast exactly um whether you watch it or not see how disastrous we can be but. so it's like Sorry in advance, because this is our first official try at actually doing this as a serious thing. Yes. But I feel like it's a trial we should have error. fun. Yeah, trial and error. Yeah. It's fun so far. So. As long as we have fun. If it's way too serious, then I, I don't think I would have probably really done this. Yeah. Like, you know. I feel like but. that's what was kind of stopping us in the beginning. We felt like we had to be something else. But, you know, we're going to try our best to be 100% authentic, 100% short Asian girl. But, Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess that brings us to the end of our episode. I'd like to thank everyone for spending your mornings, noons, nights, late nights, and, you know, whatever time zone you're listening in to us. And, of course, please do follow us on our socials at Short Asian Girls Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, X, Threads to catch up with the latest news, story times, music, fashion, gossip, anything. And also head on over to tracklife.music on all social media platforms as well to follow up on Track Life's projects. And of course, on our, our podcast or other podcasts in general. Yes. And don't forget to use the hashtag. Hashtag Shorty's Moment. That's hashtag S-H-O-R-T-I-E-S moment to share your favorite moment from any of our episodes, whether it was today or before. We might, we're going to read them. Trust me, we're going to yeah, read them. You might end up on an episode physically or online. <laughs> and again, if you want to rewatch episode zero or this episode or future episodes, head on over to Spotify and YouTube at Short Asian Girls Podcast. But again, this is your Short Asian Girl, AJ. And I'm your Short Asian Girl, Sarah Michelle, signing off. But of course, don't forget to live your life to the fullest because just like us, life, life is, is too short. short. 
See you in the next episode.